What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Thank you guys for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be talking about sampling and slicing your samples on the MPC-1. Now I did do a video a while ago showing you guys how I use the slice method on the MPC-1, but honestly uh, slicing and chopping up samples, it's a never ending topic and I can do a whole playlist on how I chop up and slice samples. It's gonna be different for everybody. There's really not a right or wrong way of doing it, but it's a fun topic that I do enjoy talking about. So today, I wanna show you guys a different method or a different approach that I take when I chop up my samples or when I sample into the MPC-1. Now, one thing I do wanna mention before we jump into it is, I have a four bar drum loop playing in the background already on my MPC-1 and it really helps me a lot. As I'm sampling into the MPC-1 and I'm chopping up my samples, it helps me just to get a vision on how I'm going to play back the samples or how I'm going to arrange it on my sequence. Now, you guys don't have to do that. Uh, There's really not like a right or wrong way of doing it, but I would recommend you guys try it out if you guys are just getting started with sampling. Just have a four bar drum loop or a drum break playing in the background as you're sampling. And one last thing, guys, I, I do wanna apologize in advance if as I'm sampling into the MPC-1, I might mute the audio or just forward that spot because I don't wanna get a copyright from YouTube. But once we start slicing these samples, I am gonna turn on the audio, obviously, and we'll start slicing these samples together. So stick around, stay tuned, and let's have some fun. Okay, so we're right here in our sampler, and on this video, I'm actually just gonna sample directly into the MPC-1. On my previous video, I actually used a slice method, which I enjoy using. I use this most of the time. But on this one, I actually just wanna go ahead and sample directly into the MPC-1, and later on, I'm gonna chop up the samples manually on my sample editor. So I'm gonna go ahead, I already have my volumes queued up, I have everything ready to go. I have the song a few seconds before where I wanna start sampling from. So I'm gonna go ahead and engage this, I'm gonna arm it, and I'm gonna go ahead and push play and record into the MPC-1. All right, so there, there's the section that I wanna sample. I'm gonna go ahead and name this, actually it's already named to sample, hit do it. Make sure you guys name your sample and hit, right here on this page, I'm actually gonna just hit edit. So before we start chopping these samples manually, I'm gonna go ahead and just truncate the first few seconds of this sample that I, I'm actually not gonna use. So the way we're gonna do that is use these cue links and I'm gonna go ahead and find the downbeat where I want to start my sample from. So I want my beat to start right there. So the way I'm gonna go ahead and truncate and discard the few seconds before that, I'm gonna hit process and right here, I'm gonna hit discard and I'm gonna hit do it. Now it's gonna start right on the downbeat. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go from trim, I'm gonna hit this trim button and now it goes into chops. So we're right here on the manual chop mode. Now, there really isn't a right or wrong way to do this. Uh, it's just a personal preference, but the way I like to do it, especially on a sample like this, which is just four beats in each bar, I like to do quarter note chops. So on every downbeat, which is a kick, and on every snare hit, I like to do a chop or a slice right there on each pad. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and just hit these pads on every kick and on every snare. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it right now and then I'll adjust it, my start and end point, manually. Now obviously, if you guys just saw right there, I'm not perfect in my timing. So on some of these ending notes, I did fall off beat. So this is the cool thing about the MPC-1. I can go ahead and just adjust my start point on some of these pads that I messed up on. All right, so right there, I just went ahead and adjusted my start point on each pad. You guys go ahead and do that. 
And the way I like to do it is, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I have a drum loop playing in the background. And I'm going to go ahead and hit play and listen to what I have going as I'm performing these pads. So obviously it's not in tempo, it's a little off tempo, and this is where it gets really fun on the MPC one. So what I'm gonna do, as long as I have my correct start and end points on these slices, I'm gonna hit shift, I'm gonna hit convert, and I'm gonna create this to a new program. I'm gonna go ahead and hit do it. Now I go to my main, and on track one, I have my drums, I wanna leave that alone. On track two, I'm gonna put that uh, program that I just sliced up. So the way we're gonna do that is you go to track two and where it says drum programs, you just hover through where it says sample. What, whatever it was that you named your sample is gonna show up as right there. Now when I hit these pads, I'm gonna go ahead and play back the sample that I just chopped up. Now, talking about matching tempo to your samples, uh, you know, this could be personal. You guys might agree with this or disagree with this. My beat is at 85 beats per minute. The sample that I recorded into the MPC might be at a different BPM. The way I like to approach those differences, I don't really like to use warp audio. I don't really like to use time stretch. I feel like it messes with my audio a little too much and I don't like what it does. What I prefer to do, I like to go and pitch it up or down go to my program edit and on program edit you got your semitones if you're on your master you got your semitones so you can kind of pitch it up or down so if I pitch it up the pitch of the sample is going to go up and that's affecting all of your pads and if I pitch it down it's going to go to lower octaves All right, so now what I'm gonna do is, I'm on sequence one, it's only two bars. I wanna extend this to four bars, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this pencil where it says sequence, and I'm gonna go ahead and say double length. So once I hit double length, now this is four bars. So what it did is just copied whatever I had in the two bar loop with my drums and extended it to four bars. So I can go ahead and play a different variation of these samples with a four bar length loop. I'm gonna go to this sequence, which I only have a four bar drum loop playing back and forth. I'm gonna hit this little pencil icon and double the length. So now it's at eight bars. Now I'm gonna hit double again, double again, double again. So now this thing is a 64 bar drum loop playing, repeating itself, what I recorded. The reason why I'm doing this is because I can go ahead and just perform a beat, adding uh, intro. I can go ahead and drop off the drum break. Uh, I can just do different things when I'm on track mute. The way I would record those performances that I have on track mute is I hit overdub and play start and I go ahead and perform those dropouts and it will record into that sequence. I'll go ahead and do that right now actually. So I'll start off just with the sample, hit overdub and start. So now when I hit stop, obviously I'm not perfect timing, I'm a little off, but it's all good. 
Uh, when I hit play, once I recorded that, it's going to give me the intro that I just did and followed on by the cuts that I also performed. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it. I'm, excuse me if I was a little, you know, all over the place, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys got any questions, any input, let us know down in the comments. Again, I appreciate you guys taking your time and checking this out. If you guys haven't already, make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. So thank you guys so much. Much love to you guys. I'll catch you guys on the next video.